Self farm, right? Um, I had a good grounding in self farm before I joined. <laughs> It's all light stuff today, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> right. Somebody, somebody said another critic. You know, someone he used to work with. Fucking hell, Sam has recorded every incident that he's ever been involved in in his book. How sad. But unfortunately, it's not. We could do another two books like that, Sean. So let's talk about self harm. So, round about nineteen ninety eight, my mate Kev Sobrolski, who encouraged me to go in the prison service, I thanked him on the last podcast. Um, Keep going, I'm just going to grab my coat. No worries. Um, get mine too, lads, please, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Fucking hell. You're cold. You're, you're not fucking Yorkshire lads, are you? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm fine, okay. me. He's got shorts on, for fuck's sake. <laughs> you fucking Nesh fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> we used to be Arizona Heat. <laughs> <laughs> no. Any... <laughs> He's got his shorts on. Hello. <laughs> anyway. Are you listening now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a mank term, I hate that. <laughs> anyway, so this company working in psychiatric units. So what they did with me, I, I told them my background, told them I'd done uh, my restraint through being a bouncer and stuff like that. So I started working at this unit um, that was near Chesterfield. There was another one near Mansfield. So when I first went, Kev told me a bit about it. It was like a premier lodge, which is a budget lodge you'll have in America, a budget hotel, two-storey. But someone had bought it out and turned it into a mental health unit. Now, they were female only in this unit, the first one I worked at. It was about 11 people upstairs and maybe seven downstairs. Um, the lasses downstairs being more acute, as in uh, more violent, more unwell. So when I got there, you got people as young as 20. These are all female, young as 20 and as old as 60, 65. So my, my first day, nurse about 60 says to me, right, what we do, we have a briefing every day. Like we used to on healthcare, mental health is all the same. If you're on a mental health unit, low secure, high secure, you have a briefing so you know what you're dealing with. So she said, right, you're new to it. Have a read at a couple of files get a couple of backgrounds on some of these lasses and you'll see they all come from a similar thing. They've all been abused, usually by men, uh, as kids, rape, that sort of thing. Some were born mentally unwell, some have become unwell, some are in here for other reasons. So the first lass we got out, um, she was a black lass and she'd come from another unit that was supposed to handle people better. However, she'd been too violent. So she, she says to me and these others, what she does this last, she lays in bed all day. They're not having that in mental health. You know, they encourage people to come out. And like you said, wild man, the hygiene thing. Yeah, so she'd lay in bed stinking. Yeah. So this nurse says, right, we're going to go in, have a word with her. I'm going to give her a chance to get out of bed. A couple of minutes, she's don't get out of bed. There's about five of us, a couple of lads, a couple of lasses, and this nurse. We're going to pick her up on a mattress, bring her into the hallway, put her down, lock her door and she can go and have a shower. So she refused. We picked her up, mattress. Before we put it on for, she jumped up, uh, cracked this nurse, who's about 60 on chin, cracked me in nose, spat in someone else's face, and then we restrained her. <laughs> in these units, there was, there was no locks or anything used. When you were restraining people, it was least force as possible, and if you were on the floor for any length of time, which could be, you would use pillars in that. So this last pillar under head, pin her down till she calmed down. Eventually, she calmed down, let her up, she went and showered. Now we get to self-harm. Um, a lot of people, a lot of women, uh, self-harm's more prolific. Uh, we might as well get straight into it. Young lass, bear in mind, a lot of these women have been abused by men. So you have to gain the trust. So you're not standing about like a screw or a doorman. Um, you know, this last said to me, just just be as natural as you can. If you're on a one-to-one -one with someone, if someone's at risk of harming themselves, you know, you chat with them. If you're on a going garden, you can go in because it's camera up, but never leave yourself on your own. You know, never go into the bedroom on your own or anything like that because you leave yourself vulnerable. So this first last come up chatting, who are you? Um, big lass. Um, I don't know. Five foot two, maybe 20 odd stone. So she says, can I show you a picture of my sister? So I said, yeah. Shows me this picture of her sister. She says, pretty, isn't she? I said, yeah, she is. She says, that's me. I went, really? 
yeah, two years ago. Antipsychotics. Side effect of antipsychotics, people put weight on. Terrible. So this lass, who has had a bit of an episode on the out, kicked off, got arrested by police, went to prison, kicked off in prison, she ended up in a mental health unit on antipsychotics, put 10 stone on. She's depressed. The actual weight, fucking hell, Sean, what is up with you? She's got his rape gloves on, though. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, get a grip. <laughs> so this this lass, um, she's put loads of weight on, um, which is sad, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So she says, do you want to feel my arm? So this is some sort of pervy thing. She's a big lass. Her arm was massive, Sean. It was like my fucking leg. So she she took my hand and put it on her arm, and it was red hot. So I says, fucking hell, what? I didn't say fucking hell, obviously. I'm yeah. mm. I says, what's that? She says, um, I've got staples in my arm. I says, what do you mean? Out of magazines, about 200 staples in her arm. She'd inserted them. She inserted them? Yep. But it was obviously infected. Oh. So she'd come from another unit. She hadn't been there long. The unit I was on, Sundays, when the papers were given out, you'd, you'd take all the staples out of the magazines. You will not give them anything because they would use anything. But this lass... You know, incredibly unwell, put a lot of weight on. Um, you know, she's in a bad way. So there was a lass I got warned about. They called her octopus again. This this is just, there's the staff did as well. It's because they knew she was. Um, when I first saw her, she was a big lass. She had three men, had to be three men who could handle themselves dealing with her. Okay, well. I'm worried about wild man getting hypothermia. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he's going. <laughs> <laughs> right, where were we? <gasps> when I saw this lass, she's a big lass, and I was told she could fucking fight. When she kicked off, she punched like a man. Yeah, so they had three big lads on her. When I first saw her, I was put on her. I did a night shift, so I got explained again, right? You sit outside a room. Door shut. So you can see if she gets up, but obviously gain her a bit of privacy as well. She's three all the time. Never less than three. Don't leave your mates. If one of you needs a toilet, get somebody else to come. Because when she kicks off, she's a fucking handful. And when I got to see her, the reason they call the octopus was um, her skin and her face looked like suckers. Yeah. Um, really quite shocking. The first time I got quite close. And the thing about some of these people is they, they are quite you know, astute, they're quite aware. You know, she come up, she says, I ain't seen you before. Um, have you heard about me? Do you know what I can do? You don't want to get on the wrong side of me, this sort of thing. It was fucking fag burns, Sean. Oh, God. Her body was covered in fag burns. Oh, I don't really know about a fag burn. Well. Incre incredibly painful burns like that. Oh. She was covered. At one point, I actually saw a stub of fag out in her eye. Oh! Ah. oh. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, Sean. I'm trying to keep it light. But, but this is how it is. This is what you have to understand, right? Now, let me tell you about the staff, basically. The staff in them units were incredibly caring. The mental health nurses, the healthcare assistants, everyone. You know, you tried to make it as natural as possible. I didn't feel uncomfortable there, me, but the people incredibly unwell. Um, it, I, I come across my first person... Um, who had Tourette's in there. We all know what Tourette's is. You know, you get ticks. Uh, you can shout things out. can be quite extreme. It can be funny, but it's quite serious, it, it can, Yeah, it? of course it can. It, it, I, I would imagine it's quite traumatic for people yeah. who have it. But from actually watching it, same as dementia, when, like, it's, I know there's nothing funny about it, but when they first, like get old and they start doing dementia they just do like silly little things yeah, what's quite funny but it gets serious then and then before you know it they're going out the house and not knowing where they're going they're wandering exactly. down the street so it's serious so this this last weren't there when i did my first shift first few shifts i got told because i was the new guy you know um she would probably pick up on my name and then it'd go from there but i weren't quite prepared so i turns up this day and they were, they were really good, this company, nice. Like I say, a lot of them were ex screws. But what they did, they tested you. So they would contact the unit. What's this guy like? At first, I might have got a shift a week, and then eventually I was working pretty much full time. Yeah. You know, they, they check on you because th these women are vulnerable, and you don't want people, like I say, going in, acting like bouncers. And so it's not like, like an agency, though. It's like. It was, but it, it was, it's still going. 
they were they were very they were very professional. Yeah. You know, they checked, you know, if 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 the home said this guy's a bit on top, then he weren't working there again. You know, because it was this these people's living space. Well there's one of some big lads there as well, though, wouldn't they really? Cut this class I was on, I'll tell you now, you know, I she never kicked off when I were there. When she did, you know, they ended up with fucking broken noses and all sorts. Um so anyway. The first time this last turned up with Tourette's, she'd been out to hospital. Um, she had shorts. <laughs> she weren't Nash either. Um, a big... What she'd done here, she got... Um, she basically taken skin off her leg and she inserted things. A lot of them do. Um, so it was a big open wound on her thigh and she would put anything in it, anything she could get hold of. When he took these lasses out into the garden, it was camered up so you were safe. Um... They would pick things up, anything, stones, bricks. They'd put a biro in there. They'd put twigs in, and they would insert things in the legs in an open wound. So this lass, it had got that bad a wound. She'd been to hospital and had a skin graft, yeah? So when she come in, again, oh, I don't know you, walk straight up, what's your name, Sam? You can't! What? Woo, and that was it. And then it was every time she saw me, shouting. But everyone else, no one, no one, you know, no one reacted to it or anything like that. And that went on for weeks. Every time she saw me, she'd shout my name, she'd swear she'd do all sorts. And it was sad. The thing was, this last, I ended up on a uh, two-on-one with her. She was trying to pull the skin graft off, which she eventually did, to start inserting again. Um, it sounds sick, that Sean, but these lasses are incredibly unwell. Yeah. One of them, however, very sad tale. Um, she was about 22, so she'd been nonced. Uh, Mum and dad had been noncing her pedos, um, other family members, and when she was 14, her sister was 11, her sister set her family home on fire, and her mum and dad burnt to death. Payback for... Payback. I have no, I have no fucking problem with that, mate. No. Um, the police knew it was a sister. Uh, the forensic evidence pointed to a sister. A sister denied it, and she said she did it, so she got locked up. Um, as a young... I'm, I'm not sure. Anyway, she went to some sort of youth offender's place, and then when she was 18, she was in a female prison, and she kicked back, and she became violent, so they moved her to a forensic unit, put her on antipsychotics, um, she she then done. She'd been in since since she was fourteen, locked up. It was about eight years. They said there was a chance she'd never get out because she'd become that violent and kicked back that much. And in this country, I don't know about America. In this country, there's no limit on how long they can hold you. You know, I've seen people finish a sentence in prison, go to some sort of mental health unit, and twelve years later they're still there. They can hold you indefinitely. Yeah, they fuck up, but because. There's a thing, it's called Rule 11, and when you when you go in there, you think, okay, well, if I do this Rule 11 now, I've got, I'll get a cushy number and go and do psych and not do the prison, you know what I mean? And it's not dangerous cushy territory. At all. No, it's dangerous you think, territory. You're there with fucking, like, all they do is give you Thorazine and Cyrocol, and you're just fucking permanently pilled up, and it's like living in with the loons, and... You need three doctor's, doctor's signatures to get you back out. And you, you're going worse and worse and worse and worse. Well, you, if you're not mentally unwell and they give you that medication, you know, with mentally unwell people, it puts them right. With people like us... If you like don't us, need it, well, you're faking it. You know exactly. I mean? Exactly. And then, you can only cheat it for so long. Yeah. You actually watch you take it. Of course they it. will. And it will make you ill. I had a cellmate, Troll, who was going around with skid stains on his boxes and... Going around all unkempt so he could do the Rule 11 gig. Yeah. Dangerous. Dangerous route to go into it. So, as you can see, this unit, the self-harm was horrendous. I'll just finish one off. This was a lass. Oh, there's two lasses. Last called Marie. This is over 20 years ago. Marie was uh, early 60s. She might well not be with us now. Another sad story. This lass at uh, about 17. The thing is, Sean, do you, do you know these things? What? You you can carry on asking me things. You can ask me that. You you can't forget these people. This Marie, very wary of men. But again, because I've got a bit of a girly side, I'm quite happy to, you know, 
um, I got on with her as well. You could have a decent conversation. And a lot of these lasses had opened up and tell you. And the reason she was in, again, and, you know, it's a familiar story, mum and dad nonsing her. So she was put... Um, bear in mind this, I was trying to work this out on the way here because she popped into my head. So it's early 2000, this, maybe 2000. She's 60-odd. So it would be probably 1950s. When she was 17, she cut her grandfather's throat in bed. Yeah, and she stuck a stiletto heel in her grandmother's head and killed her. Uh, they deemed that she was mentally unwell because she'd done that. They locked her up. So she'd been locked up till 17. She's in her 60s in a forensic unit. No life outside. When I first met her, she was unmedicated. So what's that tell you? She weren't mentally unwell. She was very much institutionalised. And she said, this is pretty much my life. They'll never let me go now. She had been an handful, you know, over the years and stuff like that. And on, on a final note, that unit, I love working there. I applied for a job at private sector prison and I couldn't make my mind up whether to stay working in there because I loved it, I enjoyed it. It was quite rewarding or good at private sector. But the last couple of weeks I went in there, there was a, there was a different atmosphere just before I joined Forest Bank. I remember seeing one at nurses. Um, they were all pretty much in tier staff and they'd had a new psychiatrist. The doctor who had been in charge of these two homes had moved on. They got another one. And his method of controlling people was to over-medicate them. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing this Marie, like you said, just drooling, sat in a chair, didn't recognise me. They were all like that. Mm -hmm. They were just all completely munged out. Not politically correct, I know. But they were just all, you know, and the staff were upset because they got no life. No. And that's how it works with different doctors, psychiatrists and stuff like that. Just pillow up, pillow just, up. Exactly. They, you know, less staff need less staff as well. They just, you know, 